Hello everybody, this is Alex from SoyaChinchar.com and here it is the new Tesla Model 3 or better known as Highland and Malaysia is one of the first few countries in the world to get it and deliveries are expected to start in the coming months and do you know that the long range version of this car is currently the cheapest EV in Malaysia that offers more than 600 km of range on a single charge let's take a closer look And the first thing you notice is the new front design. It looks much sleeker. It kind of reminds me of the new Tesla Roadster. And this is a huge improvement over the previous Tesla Model 3, which kind of looks like a dugong with its flat nose. This looks much sleeker, especially with the slimmer headlights. And you notice that there's no more fog lamps down here. And this design is not just for looks because this also improves the aerodynamics of this car. And as a result, this has the lowest drag coefficient for any Tesla car in production right now at 0.219. That's very close to the Hyundai Ioniq 6 that has a drag coefficient of 0.21. And as a result, you're gonna get more range from a single charge despite having similar battery size as the pre-upgraded model. I like the Tesla Model Y which looks more like an SUV. The Tesla Model 3 is essentially the sedan lineup of the Tesla family. And we see right here, it has this new taillight design which has a C shape which kind of reminds me of the current Honda Civic but this time it is a single piece. So if you lift up the boot, the whole thing goes up with the boot lid. In case you're wondering what happens if you're stopped at night and you with the boot open, will it be dangerous? Don't worry because they've added redundancies to this. So when the lights are up here, so you have additional redundancies down here. So you have your rear lights as well as syndicators down here. So that's like an extra backup in case people can't see these lights up here. And another difference is that uh, Tesla has removed the T logo from the back. So this time you get Tesla in full lettering. Which one do you think is better? This or the T badge? Let us know in the comments down below. Since this is a facelift model so nothing much has changed the size it looks identical to the previous model 3 uh, you still get flush door handles as well as uh, extra cameras at the sides which give you a surround view as well as uh, a remote view in case someone messes your car so you can get alerts using the Tesla Sentry mode similar to the Tesla Model Y the Model 3 also gets a CCS2 charging port and this is the same standard port you find on most EVs that sold in Malaysia and since this is a Tesla you also have access to Tesla superchargers that are being deployed around the country and on the high end uh, long range model you can support up to 250 kilowatts of DC fast charging while the base model the rear drive version only can support up to 170 of DC fast charging Tesla has also made some notable changes on the interior for the Model 3 firstly you notice that you have this new steering wheel that has the word Tesla in the middle instead of the T logo and one thing that's lacking obviously is the lack of physical stocks so instead of uh, using uh, a stock to indicate left or right or to change the gear selector everything is done through buttons and touchscreen for example to change the signal light you have to use the capacitive buttons on the steering wheel I'm not sure how this is going to be when you go to runabouts because when you move the steering wheel the buttons move along as well so this can be quite tricky and might take a while to get used to and similarly in terms of the gear selector previously on other Teslas you have a stock to change between park, reverse, neutral and drive you don't have that anymore so you need to use the touchscreen display to swipe to reverse, to drive, to set the parking and uh, I think that's something that I'm not really a big fan of. In case you're wondering what happens if the screen breaks? What happens if you can't um, control from the touchscreen? So Tesla has also provided backup buttons for the gear drive selector. On the Tesla Model S plate, if not mistaken, um, they have the buttons down here, but on the Model 3, it's mounted on the roof. So it's actually located next to the hazard buttons up here. So you can have parking, reverse, neutral drive buttons up here. There are also capacity buttons because you can't push it. Right now, it's not illuminated, but I can clearly see that there's park, reverse, neutral drive up here. I don't know about you, but I prefer physical controls for day-to-day -day driving stuff. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Are you okay with signal lights on the steering wheel button? It's not for me, but maybe it's okay for you. Let me know. You also get a 15-inch display up here. It looks the same as before, but there's some slight differences. The bezel is slightly thinner. Similar as the previous Teslas, you don't have any controls for the vents, and everything is controlled from the touchscreen. Even for the aircon vent controls, even to open the glove box, you need to use the touchscreen by tapping this. And on the Model 3, 
it's quite a tiny glove box and yeah i can tell that this is from tesla's shanghai giga factory it's only big enough to put gloves i guess uh, i don't like the sound of that let's do that it feels like a magnetic box but what's new right now is that you can actually disable certain vents from the touchscreen. I guess that's the improvement. In terms of connectivity, you don't have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You need to rely on Tesla's proprietary system, which has its own built-in navigation. And you can also stream videos through Netflix, YouTube, and Disney Plus Hotstar from the central display. You still get two wireless chargers up front. And you also get a USB-C port down here, which is, has been upgraded to support up to 65 watts. So that should be good enough to charge your laptop. Other than that, I think Tesla has made some improvements in terms of build quality. They play around with more materials. You have this like a denim kind of finish up over here as well. And for the first time ever, you also get ambient lighting. So that gives it a bit more upmarket look. And you can customize these colors on the touchscreen as well. Despite being a facelift model, Tesla claims that they've made some improvements to the suspension. So it's now more comfortable. You still get loads of space over here. You have this deep cubby hole down here. And you also have another slider here for the cup holders as well. So feels pretty neat and you have this soft dampening experience as well. Similar to other Teslas, you can open the door by pushing the button and it will unlock the car remotely or you can actually pull the manual lever down here right above the power window controls. And also the seats are now perforated and as I mentioned earlier, you also get ventilated and heated seats for the front passengers. The rear, I think you only get heated seats, no ventilation, but this is a pretty good upgrade, especially in Malaysia in a tropical weather. Over at the back of the Tesla Model 3, it's pretty spacious, I think. Um, this ample amount of knee room, feet room, it all depends on the driver in front. If they're seated lower, there's actually not much space to put your feet underneath unless they adjust the seats higher. Not as great as the Tesla Model Y since those seats are actually mounted much higher. And, and you can see right here, the Model 3 Highland now comes with an 8 inch display. So this can be used to adjust your aircon, your aircon directions as well. And this screen can be used to watch your videos like Netflix, YouTube, and the Disney Plus. But I think it's okay if there's two passengers. If there's a middle passenger, they're gonna block the screen. Headrooms are pretty decent. You also get this uh, expensive uh, glass uh, roof for, for the front and the back. Um, as what we mentioned, the Model Y, I think this can get pretty hot. There is some UV coating over here, but I think that you probably want to thin this up or maybe get a sunshade so that it won't get so hot during uh, long drives. Similar to the front, you also get perforated seats, but you don't get ventilated seats over here. But it feels pretty nice, it feels pretty plush. Uh, according to Tesla, they actually adjust the angle for the rear seat so that it doesn't feel too upright. I think they're okay. I think they could do more recline, but that's the max I can go. I wish they could be a bit more reclined. This is still a bit more upright for my liking, but overall, it's still quite okay. Tesla has also upgraded the sound system in the Model 3. You get the higher long range model, you can get 17 speakers with two subwoofers at the back. So that's pretty neat. And they also made this carry much quieter by having a double glazed glass for the rear glass as well as the rear glass panel as well. The previous one, you only have the double glazed glass only for the front. Tesla is also building its supercharger network in Malaysia and there's three right now. One in Pavilion KL, another one in Big Box uh, Johor, another one at Sunway uh, Pyramid. And to find and navigate to the supercharger is pretty easy. Just go to the navigation map, click on this icon and you can locate the nearest uh, charging point. So let's try the furthest one at Big Box in uh, Johor. You can tap on that and it will tell you how much battery you are going to have left at the destination. So at this current state of charge of 90% on this uh, real drive model, we will reach Sunway Big Box in Johor with 5% battery left. And it even reminds you to stay below 100 km per hour so that you can reach the destination on the single charge. And another thing about Tesla is that when you select these supercharging networks, for example, in Pavilion KL, it will do the battery preconditioning automatically. So by the time you reach at the charging station, your battery is at the right optimal temperature to receive the maximum charging rate. And in terms of uh, activation, Tesla Supercharger is super seamless. It's charged automatically to your account. So you can see right here, the rates are one ringgit 25 cents per kilowatt hour. Just drive to the station, open the port, plug in the connector, and you're good to go. You'll start charging automatically. Don't need to mess with any apps or any cards. It will just charge automatically and it will bill directly to your safe credit card.
The Tesla Model 3 comes in two variants and the one we have right here, this is the base model which starts at 189,000 ringgit. And since this gets a smaller battery with a rear motor, this has a claim range of up to 513 kilometers on a single charge. It can get from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.1 seconds up to a top speed of 201 km per hour. If you want more performance and more range, the one you want to get is the Tesla Model 3 Long Range. That has twin motors and has a bigger battery and can get from 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.4 seconds up to a top speed of 201 km per hour. On a full charge, that can deliver up to 629 km on a single charge. That's pretty impressive. Similar to the Tesla Model Y, the Model 3 comes with 4 years or 80,000 km warranty whichever comes first. But the battery has a much longer warranty coverage. For the base model, you get 8 years or 160,000 km whichever comes first. And for the long range version, you get 8 years or 192,000 km whichever comes first. So there have it guys, the new Tesla Model 3 has finally made its debut here in Malaysia with price starting from 189,000 ringgit. So what do you think? Are you going to make a booking? By placing a 1000 ringgit non refundable deposit, let us know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe us on our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll be informed of our future videos. This is Alex from SoyaChincha.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next one. Bye!